Feature Friday. The freshest. <gasps> What's up, people? Welcome to Feature Friday Plus. Today, we are joined by our first Indian music industry guest, which is Yuming Nautijal. Welcome. What an honor. Thank you. Honor. Thank you. Hi. Thank you. Thank you so much. How are you guys? We're doing all right. Thank you. Uh, it's actually quite sunny in, in London at the moment. So for a it, change, it makes everyone happy. <laughs> <laughs> it's really hot here in Mumbai, in India. India is hotter than usual, actually. Wow, how good. You're wearing like a hoodie and everything. You know, you don't get warm. Yeah, that's just because of the because we spend so much time in the ACs in the, oh, right. the in the studios. So then you kind of get sick if I would not <laughs> keep myself warm here. That, that reminds so, me a lot. Where, where we're from in South America, uh, in Venezuela, it gets really warm as well. So yeah. everyone just lives in the ACs. You can't stand the outside. Wow. So tell me, guys, what 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 are you guys up to? How's it going? What's up? Doing all right, actually. Um, what, one of the things you know, one of the things that I, I actually was really excited to talk to you about actually was um the biggest the biggest one of our favorite discoveries in music has been the Indian music industry and the. Um, Obviously, we've come across your work, and that that was, you know, not only mind blowing. I think you've seen some of the reviews and the reactions. I have. <laughs> you guys are amazing. <laughs> you guys are amazing. I've seen some of your reviews. You guys are too funny sometimes. You know, it's, your chemistry is amazing, and uh, it's just I think it's very special that we are getting to do this together. Yeah. Oh, definitely. But I think it, it overall, like the whole experience of discovering and. Uh, and delving into a brand new music industry yes. for us that we grew up in South America. Um, we were never exposed, exposed to music like that until we came to London. And that that was a you completely change, brand, yeah, it was a brand new awakening of music. And I would like to thank you for, you know, uh, making that type of music, introducing us into something so wonderful. Thanks a lot, man. <laughs> thank you so much. I think Indian music scene definitely has blown up in uh, many ways in the past few years and uh, it's amazing and very, it's, we are very excited I mean as an in industry we are very excited to kind of enter the world market right now Indian songs are doing so well across the globe uh, it's 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 almost like you find an Indian community in every country every place and it's it's, it's amazing I think uh, music reaching out to you guys I don't I would we would have never got to have this conversation I mean it's just through music we are getting to do this and uh, yeah yeah it's, a, it's like a reminder of music knows no barriers you know it really just connects people at its core mm. it, really... it doesn't know language it doesn't understand uh, limits and it's all through you know pure think... pure emotion well you're obviously um one of the things that for, for those listening you're coming to london which is uh probably one of the most exciting news that we've had this year uh we all can't right. wait to see you live so yeah, I think you're going to notice there uh, the huge variety of, of, of people as well that will go to the concert. And, and it's incredible how many you know fans that write to us. It's like, holy moly, I, you know, I'm from Morocco. I'm from Greece. I'm from Canada. And I love Jubin. And yeah. it's like, it's, it's amazing. Dude. It, it's truly, I think it's going to blow your mind. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, so this is going to be my first time I'll be performing in um, the UK. And uh, I am nervous about it. I'm not a nervous artist, but I'm nervous about it and I think it's a good thing if I'm nervous about it. You need a little bit of nervousness as an artist to perform, I think it's very important. If you're too confident, that means something is not right. And uh, <laughs> So, yeah, I think I'm in the right space to come there and kind of play music. My set, uh, I'm playing on the 25th and the 26th and uh, my set will not be all Hindi, definitely your language is going to be Hindi, but we will come with more of a sound, as you guys said, you know, that uh, music is about an experience rather than languages, castes and races and cultures, you know, it's more of the experience that you uh, feel when you hear a sound. It could literally come from anywhere. And uh, with that thought, I think me and my entire band will come there. We'll play, some, we'll play something very interesting for you guys, yeah. Nice. Well, I, I am I am highly anticipating it because I think it's a um, when we first watch what some of your videos live. I think the first initial. I think if you've seen any of the videos, you'd see the innate reaction that came from it. it it's that magical aspect that came from the environmental aspect of music itself that was undeniable, and I, it was like you became one with the music. 
and that a total game changer. So my question would be something <laughs> like, where where did it start for you? Take me all the way back to the beginning. Like, where did you start making music? What ignited the yeah, passion what, for music? What's, what's been the journey like? Yeah, it's very intriguing because to get to the level you're at and music-wise, skill-wise, you're at mm. probably the highest level and one of the highest levels that we've been able to witness. Not to be super nice, mate, but I do think you're a <laughs> bloody good musician. So what, what was the, what's the journey been like? Uh, so, uh, so I was, since I was little, I had a lot of things that I could do. So when, when you choose something because that's the only thing you got to do, it's a different thing. But when you have so many options to do in life and then you choose something, that means you mean business. And that's how I got into music. I was always into this so that I can learn music and I can be a serious musician. Uh, I was into mixed martial arts and then I was into uh, air rifle shooting, nationals, I've done athletics in districts I've played. Uh, apart from that I have my MBA degrees. Uh, I had a lot of options in life, I mean, to move ahead. It was about that one hour, you know, I would spend that one hour before I sleep. You know, that just that, that, that moment where it's just me and my guitar, I think that was the best hour of my day and if I could make it a career it would be a blessing to me and that's why I started doing music I never uh, thought I will be so big one day and I still tell myself if I would not be as big as I am today I would still be sitting with my guitar and doing the same thing that I'm doing now and I think with that thought career moved fast things moved fast when I came to Bombay I was prepared I did not come to Bombay to learn I came to Bombay I was prepared. It took me two years to get my first song. And uh, yeah, first song released, suddenly <clears throat> the whole industry was so excited about the new voice. They wanted, they wanted to hear my voice on their music, on their song. And uh, I had this list of musicians I wanted to work with. And all those lists of names turned into messages on my phone that we want to meet you, we want to work with you. And uh, yeah, one, one song at a time. And I think one thing I learned out of this, one thing I took out of it was that uh, uh, I think I still get to work on my music the way I would work on my first song. I think that's, that's how much I put into it. I still put that much into it. Like sleepless nights, you know, when you have a bad dub, sometimes you dub something. People are... So if you have a bad dub and everybody is happy about it that is the worst feeling ever <laughs> correct <laughs> it's so true because it's incomprehensible how can they enjoy this how can they enjoy this and i know that yeah. we can take it so and they are so happy and convinced that they're like no this is it for us and i'm like no yeah. this is not it we have to work more on the song and we got to take it somewhere else and yeah. uh, so i think those little little things about uh, a musician kind of uh, paves the path and uh, one day at a time, yeah. Playing in Wembley this month, right for you guys. So <laughs> I'm excited. You know what's intriguing? Just, just, just hearing you talk. And I do want to ask you, by the way, what sort of martial arts were you doing? Because I'm a big martial arts fan. What, what were you doing when you were younger? I got into uh, the traditional Japanese martial art. It is Okinawa, Gujuryu. Oh, okay, okay, nice. It's, yeah. it's more a traditional. Uh, if you know, then it's more of traditional stuff. It's more of, uh, it's, it's more of a, it's more like art of living rather than uh, brawling you know what i mean it's more about it's more about discipline it's more about so i think all these things got together and uh, got me becoming a good musician because i think all of it complements you know it's all form of arts by the end of the day i've trained eight years i got my black belt uh, then i trained further i was supposed to give exams for my dan two black and before that i shifted to bombay and i was like Okay, finally I'm getting to do music, so let's go for it. Yeah. Well, it, it it is intriguing to to hear how many you know so many different paths, and somehow there is some sort of energy and synergy in between all of them that then sort of collide and connect, and you and it sort of made you the person you are today. But something really intriguing is I, I find with people, I, I I guess you're kind of like this. You're someone who probably enjoys being busy and being active and doing things because you had so many choices how would you find the time to kind of quiet the mind to 
to touch into the muse, into that creativity of writing yeah. songs. What was that process like of transitioning from having, you know, 50 things to do and then in that hour of the day, relaxing and connecting to your creativity? What was that process like? So there's this, you know, again, this came from the martial art world. There's this, we are hardly using our senses, you know, we have, we have uh, the senses, for instance, eyes are the window to the world for us. Not the moment I shut the window, I have a blank room by myself. That is just me and my room. There's nobody there. That's my process, I would say. I would just shut my eyes and I'm there wherever I am. I mean, uh, you know, uh, I learned Indian classical music when I was... Uh, I started learning Indian classical music at a very young age and uh, I figured that if your basics are clean in terms of music, if your if your basics are just crisp and clean, if you're sharp with your basics, then then everything else is very very easy, you know, in terms of music. Because when you do the hardest form of music, then the other forms just become a walkthrough. And uh, uh, getting that piece, I mean, if I go out searching for it, I think I'll never find it. I think it's more within thing, it's more internal process to find that little space where you can just close your eyes and just get into a song as much as you can and judgment to know when you are not in the space to sing that song. I am good judge, when I am not able to sing a song I just end the dub and I come back, I ask for time again, we can meet again and do it again but it has to be done at the right time, in the right way and especially in the right mood. Yeah, and I think that that's a really interesting uh, mental process, though, because singing and composing and being a vessel for music itself, because that's the way I would describe learning Indian classical music. You become a vessel of the notes, of, of the sequence, of chords. You stop being a performer. It's like you're another instrument in the music uh, composition. Absolutely. Right, uh, and and please please correct me if I'm wrong. I'm still kind of learning. It's a, a, a when it comes to the Indian musical a, a classical. Indian classical music. That that's been one of the mysteries that we're trying to uncover because wow. it's very complex. It's so fascinating to me though because it's it's a hack. You got <laughs> it right once you learn the foundations into the way that you guys do it. So you learn Indian classical music first. You learn, uh, you know, how to do right. rag and and how to play with the tala and everything that comes with it. And it's fascinating because after that, then the music world known to the West is basically untapped for you. It's well, limitless. I think you, and, and again, I'm not sort of being nice. <laughs> I think given the Indian classical background, um, and there's other singers that also do a great job of this, specifically in India, of course, it's like other realms of music become more easily available because of the vast knowledge of uh, possibilities in chords, notes, and journeys. Absolutely. So it's like like in martial arts. So if you keep yes. blocking, you keep blocking, you keep blocking, and you block it so much that one day somebody's gonna throw a punch at you and you won't even think and you'll just block it yourself. It's just like that. It's muscle memory it just gets so deep inside you that mm. everything is so easy after that. And I think <clears throat> where musicians uh, uh, you know, when you learn too much music, then because the basics have to be learned with a lot of technicalities and a uh, lot of sharp edges have to be covered when you're learning notes and uh, different ragas, as you said, different uh, notations. Where the bridge really matters is when you actually go out to perform what you've learned. So when you're learning it, you are completely focused on your notes, on your singing, on your pronunciations, on your phonetics, on your uh, instrumentation, on the overall sound. But when you actually go to perform it, that's exactly the time when you don't think about any of this. That's the time when you stop impressing and start expressing. And that kind of changes the performance for anybody. That's the, crazy. I, I again, I, I think it's right. So walk me through your first ever uh, classical performance, I, I, if you ever remember, if you did it in school or 
what was it like to be aware of that change of mentality from practice into performing? What did I feel that? Like I learned that very late in life, you know. I learned that very late in my life. I mean, uh, when I actually started uh, doing mainstream singing in terms of singing a lot in the studios, that's when I figured that my voice uh, or anybody's voice, I would say, has so much character and so much depth in different songs. A voice is capable to do anything. And uh, why should I modulate it why shouldn't i just actually do it why shouldn't i just actually sing it why why don't i actually mean it if i'm sad about something i should just mean it even if you guys don't understand the language you will still feel my sadness otherwise i'll otherwise i'll keep trying to convince you guys that i'm sad in this song and it will not come through but if i just actually feel it and actually say the words instead of singing it it works for me and I think it works for every performer. I think the, the best example I have of that, um, so I, I grew up a percussionist, so a drama and Latin percussion. Wow. And, and the, the best wow. example I have, I'm not a, not a singer, but I think perhaps we, we can understand each other in the manner of, it's, it's really hard to teach um, that. Touch and feel. Yes, that you need. <laughs> you yeah. need a, I know a, what you're talking about. You need a yes. specific uh, ability to modulation to everything to translate mm. the skill and use it as a vessel through emotion. And even in drumming, you can do that. You know, accents, uh, uh, speed, or actually slowing things down, uh, uh, cadence and rhythmicality. Mm. I mean, singing is sort of similar. You know, in that you mentioned phonetics, diction, and delivery. And it it seems that. Again, you're probably, to be fair, mate, you're probably a bad example because you're so good at it. You're so far ahead. So it's maybe when, when people are sort of learning it, it's kind of hard to understand the jump. So that's why it's so interesting to hear from you when you made the, the sort of the connection. Mm -hmm. um, because it, it's, it's a really peculiar sense of I should just be me and sing and, and, and mm -hmm. translate who I am through the notes and through the instrument rather than try and regulate and formulate something that came An from emotion. a book yeah, yeah, yeah. so so I'll, I'll make that easier i'll make that easier to put it so you have to start playing to express and you have to stop playing to impress when you're a musician and you know people are listening to you it's a very thin line we really want to play to the people so that they so that they like us you know they understand us they 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 love what they are seeing and that is the difference between expressing and impressing we are as new musicians we always end up impressing wanting to impress it's like playing for other musicians instead of playing for people yes, yes. it's like it's like playing but the moment you s just start expressing what you need to say like actually just say it or actually just play it then suddenly you feel that your entire audience is spellbound and they can't even blink their eyes. They are just seeing your reality and that is such a rare thing to see today in people. Well, and to be completely honest, I think there there is a, like you said, it's such a fine line because the there is the whole business side to <laughs> to, to music, right? There's, there's a whole thing that, that happens before you go on stage it goes beyond your vocal warm-ups. It goes beyond your you on internalizing your mental process. So when you step on stage and you have to be so aware of your own emotions to then become spellbound, to then translate that into everybody else that's watching, it's a it's a completely wild uh, process when you think about it, right? So because you have to find yourself in the journey first. Yeah. Um, be so present, right? Right. My, <laughs> Was that transition between Indian classical music to more modernistic approach of music, it like the Bollywood approach to it, hard for you? Well, just we have pop, yeah. Yeah, was that hard for you, or did you find it kind of easy to understand? Uh, so Bollywood music seems the easiest. Right easiest of all the forms of music in India. 
India itself has so many different forms of music. Yes. So many, so, so many. many languages too, right? Mm. Telugu, Malayalam. Uh, uh, let me let me think of another one. Punjabi, <laughs> Punjabi, Punjabi, Punjabi yeah. Telugu, yeah. yeah, Tamil, Tamil, right? So there's so many, right? Every twenty kilometers, there's a change of language in India. <laughs> right. in oh my god! Country. <laughs> <laughs> and with that so, comes another industry of music, right? With each different <laughs> language, kind of. It it does, and you know, uh, with this whole. So, so with this whole, uh, you know, when you are dealing in a country like India, so we, you know how it really started for me when I was doing music. When I started doing music, I learned the Indian classical notation, Hindustani classical no- notations. It consisted of uh, seven notes plus uh, five more to include the minors, as yeah. in all of the notation, twelve notes. And when I learned the twelve notes, I was so happy. I was like, "Wow! I think I've learned the basics of everything." And then I went to the south side of India, and I figured out there are four more extra notes there, which they use <laughs> in their notation, which I had no idea. I didn't know. I didn't even know what they were called. So that's when I realized that it is all about feel. Learning is fine. Languages are fine. If you got feel, you got everything. And Then I just started working on the feel. Uh, now, how do you work on the feel? Then I said Bollywood is a great place to work on the feel because it's and it's a place where you get instant criticism and instant reaction to your work. So if I release my music, I would exactly know how the country or the or the majority of the country is perceiving it. Again, we come back to the place where I'm uh, where I'm uh, coming from. A I come from a very small town. in india the northern side himalayas that that's uh, that belt mountain range of india coming to bombay uh, and uh, this is like a mainstream city it's where the bollywood is it's where the um, it's where the it's where all the bollywood all the entertainment work really happens so when i came from there and i shifted here i figured out that i first i felt it must be really easy because i've learned indian classical i've learned the south indian classical i know all notes i know all notations and stuff but when i came here i figured out it none of that matters when i go in front of the mic because what these guys need they have all kind of equipment if i somehow if i lose a note somewhere or somewhere maybe my voice goes far from the mic you know all those little glitches that you can feel in a studio they have nothing to do with that all they need is feel <laughs> if i cannot give them the feel then they don't need my voice it's very simple i can sound horrible but if there is feel in there they will go for it and that's when the whole journey of starting to feel music began so i started that through bollywood and the first thing i learned in this is that i have to start saying sometimes when we are singing we are just singing we are not saying it we know the words it's all in our head we know the notations we are already playing it it's right in front you know this section is going to gonna i'm going to play this section gonna i'm going to play this but what about you start saying the song now if you have to not sing it but you have this you have to speak it, yeah, yeah. to speak it. so right now i'm yeah. talking to you it will mean something to you Similarly I just have to sing it to you like I have to just put it out there and I have to talk to you while I'm singing it and the feel happens and it worked for me and I think it's going to work for a lot of singers yeah for sure I sure. think so too overall I think in any type of art that's the type of advice that can be applied to any type of art form whether it's it's artistic in in a way of like dance whether it's a painting or sculpting the artist really has to have that link that magic connection between the the expression and the communication with the piece it also makes it more global um yes. coming from your point of view because emotions are universal correct so we they, all feel them they surpass they surpass all possible barriers take me because obviously one of the most interesting things about bollywood is obviously that when when you perform a song people related to a story yes a cinematic story um i haven't looked at much on how what the procedure in the studio is like do you get given the script and you kind of know what the movie's about so you can kind of emulate the emotions what what's the process of making one of those where well, ginormous bollywood hits <laughs> that you've made <laughs> some of the biggest hits were just made just 
made in minutes so maybe just you know some some of the hits i would just go it is it just sometimes you work so hard on a song and you really want it to work and then everybody's like what a shitty track you've made <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> and then sometimes you think what the, what 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 am i really making is it even sounding good and then you play it to the world and the world's like wow what a piece of art it is not in our control <laughs> it is not in our control we can always say that we made it but i believe that it is made through us it is just the right point right time it is it is going to happen through me it's going to happen through you and that's it we are we can't make something so magical you know i think it's the only form of magic left in the world if you call it music so i don't think we can make it we can just be channel through which we can kind of give it out there is this um, it really interesting philosophy behind um uh, uh, we were speaking to to a singer from the philippines and uh, he he mentioned to us that his his philosophy behind how he connects to um through music is that he he feels that as us as human beings were simply like satellites mm -hmm. and the ideas are already in the universe and they simply find collide, your antenna yeah like they collide wow. with you, know? you and and it's wow. such a beautiful and and and, and poetic thought so I, it kind of wow. goes with what you're saying you know absolutely absolutely wow i i resonate in fact i have now i have a better way what what is the name of the singer that you're talking about i think uh, it was well, he's a rapper actually i think it was easy mill from um, from the philippines but i could i could also because we, we we do so many podcasts but i think it was easy mill who sort of mentioned it to us off of camera he was saying that because he's writing a new album at the moment his name is uh, ez and then m i l and okay. uh, he's writing a new album called duality and he was saying that he feels sometimes that he just has to access that point of being Neutrality. receptive yeah uh with with the world and the universe and the ideas will, will will come and they will be provided and that you know is such a again he's a rapper and very <laughs> philosophical in the way he writes so it, it goes along with what he says but it, it kind of again it, it aligns to your thoughts too yeah true true that it's very well it's a nice way to put it we are all satellites i think it's very true yeah it's true and and you know I have a question though because there's nothing why like more crazy than the, the the statement that you just made in in the idea that in in Bollywood because it's such an active part of the industry in the whole of India and now obviously worldwide you get instant feedback what what and 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 not just in minimal amounts you're talking millions, millions yeah. of views millions of opinions what what was it like the first time your first song came out and it became a hit? How how was the mental process for you? Was that overwhelming? Did did it make you feel insecure? Did you have any kind of like doubts about it? Any at all? That's what I said when we began the interview. I made up my mind too soon that this is what I want to do. <laughs> <laughs> I I was not here to hit and try. I was not here by accident. I right. made my way through. I came prepared and I knew what a hit will feel like. And when it happened to me, it made me hungrier for more. And now I knew that uh okay, it was just a validation. My first hit was more like a validation mm. that okay, all this while I was not wasting my time and now I'm here for the big boys. So, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Also the the mentality, of course, you made the choice and you were ready. You mentally, physically in your prime, you knew exactly what you wanted to do. What made you make that choice though? Out of everything else, true. Yeah, what, because was it, was you it had just... so many choices. What exactly ignited that this this is the path? Was it simply because of that connection between music that you felt kind of in your soul? Um or was it perhaps I mean, it was very simple. Know. It was very very simple for me. I so i used to have my mixed martial art classes then i used to go sometimes i would go uh, go to the shooting range to practice targets uh i was even pursuing my education mba i was doing masters in business and i was doing everything but you know spending that one hour with my guitar just jamming was life for me i mean it was just life for me it, it made so much sense suddenly i felt if i could you know do this for the rest of my life 
like i knew that i will do this for the rest of my life but now if i can make money out of it and make a living out yeah. of it and do it for the rest of my life <laughs> it would be an idle life for me so then i started putting all my head into uh i got really serious about music i took it took music as a subject in my uh, education oh. system yeah and uh even after that uh i i faced a rejection in a reality show one time and uh which was again very important for me after that i traveled across india i learned different styles of music i even um, <clears throat> got into some classic rock space where i would learn some progressive music uh i started getting into production i started getting into writing i started getting into composing i i mean it just kind of sparked me a little bit and that uh, got me learning a lot and Two three years of that, and then I was just here. It was not. It, it was not a difficult journey for me. I mean, people talk it was struggle, and yeah. I say if it was struggle, then you're in the wrong line of work. If you're struggling with your work, if you're struggling with something that you love, then you're not loving the right kind of things. You know, I was just having fun with music, and it kind of worked out just like that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there is sometimes. Um, huge power in the conviction of a, of and confidence of a decision but there is no going back mm-hmm. that there is a, you know a huge amount of power in that and re- and it makes every it puts everything into perspective rejection no longer means that this is not what you're meant to do with your life it simply means you're not good enough yet perhaps it's it's yeah. like a feel wow. it clicks something in within you right and maybe um it makes sense given your martial arts background that I I I did tennis full well, I still do to do tennis full time when I came when we moved to London and one well, of the biggest lessons you learn as I'm sure you learned it in in martial arts probably the consequences in martial arts are a bit bigger than in tennis and you lose a tennis match no problem you lose you know a match in <laughs> fighting it's going to hurt but what what you do learn as an athlete or a sportsman is losses first of all they're not the end of the world second of all another opportunity will come and third it gives you an opportunity to improve which is the biggest deal it gives you a reality check to a certain extent and life is pretty brutal in that sense mm-hmm. it will slap you in the face every now and then and look you're not maybe who you thought you were or you're not as good as you think you are it doesn't mean that's not what you're not meant to do it means you have a chance to improve it means you have a chance to to become better and individuals like yourself who are able to see the power in this it's no wonder that then they achieve the things that they do there's obviously you know again universe the stars align and things like that but um it makes sense you know yeah it does it absolutely what you're saying i think if that if rejections would have would not have happened then i would have never become this good at what i do i would be much uh, much uh, much junior in my craft you know when you come from a small town i remember i was the blue eyed boy with a guitar on stage everybody saying this is the best voice we've heard and you know it kind of gets to your head i was younger much younger going to the reality show seeing so many singers thousands of them everybody singing better than me that is what i needed at that point of time you know and <laughs> it kind of really really it kind of really put me in a place where i was like whoa it was like a big mirage that kind of broke in front of me and i was like buddy you need to work if you really need to be a musician you need to work hard and uh, yeah it was it was it was amazing it was amazing i would not have it any other way okay so let's let's move on with this story so to the present you've you've achieved many things that you had planned you have done things that you know to uh, to be fair if anyone had achieved 25% of what you've done i'd consider that a successful career <laughs> um so you you've done a lot and you're fairly young as well So what what kind of motivates you? What what keeps you going to work harder and not sleep as much as you probably should be, mate? So what I've gotten famous for the stuff that I've done for past 4 years, maybe 5 years. Yeah. is not my ultimate goal. Actually, this was the weakest bit of my music. I was the weakest at this. And that's through that I got uh recognition through that i'm getting to speak with you guys i mean it's not the work that uh i personally came to bombay to do 
it was just one of the things i was doing i mean what i want to do is i want to write my own music i want to write my own uh com- produce my own music and uh build build my own communications build my own channels and when i came to bombay it was not the right time for that independent art- artists were not able to bring up uh were not able to bring up so much juice in terms to make big music hits in india but now i think uh film music is still secondary independent music is much bigger in india right. i could be one of the flag bearers to do that but now it's basically time for me to start actually doing what i want to do so <laughs> for me yeah. it's just a beginning and i think it should be like this till the end yeah well it, and i think that's an interesting thought process because obviously uh, to the to the world's eye there the success is so subjective right they see what it's imprinted in the videos what people talk about the the general perspective of the compositions that the they numbers, are, the money the fame exactly the, the the sold out places the people's reactions in live shows and stuff so it's always really interesting to get the chance to talk to artists like you that in the world's eye in the world's perspective is it's already consolidated right so like how how much further can anyone push like what else is there um but to I, you there's like a whole new world like this is discover, just the right? beginning for the longest time i had no resources to do this but today i have all the resources to make the music yes. that i want to to shoot it the way i want to to put it out there the way i want to to reach out to the people i want to i mean it's a beautiful world for musicians today you don't need yeah. to run behind music labels and corporates to make music you know you can just make your music in your own you don't have to book fancy studios and spend right. so much money to make a song you can just sit in your house pick up your guitar and make a song and put it out there and yeah. you see the music travels and how it travels if it's good that is just very hopeful for all musicians who are aspiring to be musicians and who are musicians i think we are walking in a great age date where music is the thing that's flourishing the most actually it's flourishing more than the films these days it's also intriguing as well how you know thanks to the internet i mean look at evidence it's you know the conversation we're having now but it's super intriguing too how due to the globalization through technology the internet and things like this things that were impossible in terms of markets that you could not reach because of you know your geolocation and things like that are no longer an issue you know it, one of the amazing things is this is you know the fact that music from india all over india mm-hmm. it's being heard in london for example non-stop dude a uh, new york we have friends from la <laughs> it's non-stop yeah. in in south america uh, which south america the uh, south america is a wonderful continent and where we're from in venezuela and they you know they they wow. find places but The only mm. problem is you're only really exposed to Latin music. And, you, and, and perhaps, I love Latin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you never really hear music from anywhere else. But now, because of the internet, TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, all of a sudden people are getting singers from Korea, India, yeah. Pakistan, the Philippines, uh, Malaysia, France. Yeah. You know, and it's like, wow, this really puts it into perspective that you do have. a huge library of global music in your hand and, yeah, and things sure. yet to discover like the inspiration that it ignites due to these things right like the 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 amazing uh, creations that can come up from this moment yeah. like from from the exposure itself i let alone what it can come up after that right it's it's um, it's incredible uh, i think i think it's the right, right time as well for but uh, you know just my humble opinion but i think it's probably <laughs> the right time for someone like you to yeah perhaps be the the the, the flag bearer and the leader in 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 an industry flourishing as much as india because if 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 you could do it then everyone be like oh my god i do been story yeah i find that motivating maybe i can follow his footsteps you know and india is such a place where now so when i entered the industry we were hardly penetrating 15 20% of our country through internet you know we are still a we were we were when i entered i entered industry in 2012 right so in 2012 india was a country where we were penetrating to uh, the country through through internet it would be like 
I think 20%, 15% of the country, wow. maybe less, maybe lesser. Today we are reaching a place where we are penetrating 60% of the country. Still there's way more, so more development to happen for pe people to get their hands on smartphones and reach out to artists. But now that's why that's why such billion billion hits are coming from India because suddenly we are we are a huge community man. We are not yeah, only in yeah, India, yeah. we are across the globe and I mean we are one point three billion people in our country and then there are people who are <laughs> just our country. We are one point three billion. And then there are people who are living abroad. There's it's become a huge community and that's why these hits are coming from everywhere. Internet is spreading fast, development is happening fast. So we had in 2022, it's just been 10 years and literally music has changed. I, and I have no idea where it's going from here. <laughs> yeah, <neither. laughs> well, talking about change and influences, uh, what are your primary influences in music when it comes to like, because you, you do have a wonderful take and, and some of these original songs that are like the 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 country's favorites, like the ultimates, right? They're the golden songs. And most importantly, mate. Our favorites, yeah, some of our <laughs> favorites covers, you know what I mean? But then you come you come into the picture and you revolutionize the, the songs, right? So the 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 takes, the influences of, of alternative rock, the the uh the fusion ideas of, of alternative music into pop and, and ballads. Where, it's with Indian classical. That's right. What who are your main uh, when you were growing up? Yeah, yeah, what were you listening to, bro? When you were growing up and things like that. You, I was listening to a lot of uh Nusrat Fateli Khan. I was listening to a lot. Oh. Nusrat Fateli Khan. He uh, he he, uh, he comes from a lineage of 600 years of Kawali singing. Wow. Even before the partition of India, even like he's like predated from that time when there used to be kings and courts, and his family used to sing in the court of the kings. And since then, generations and generations of family have been singing Kawali. And uh, I've heard a lot of that because it's great poetry and the song structures and the skills, everything is A1. It is unmatchable. Apart from that, I've learned, I've, I've heard. So, you know, once I learned that all music is one music, you know, yeah. in terms of sound, it's just all it's just names are changing and languages are changing, but it's, just, it's the same thing. I figured out that I started understanding all kinds of music after that. I mean, stuff that I would not even understand if I would hear before learning music. After learning music, I started, it, everything started making sense, you know. And uh, that exploded in me in, in a way that I would literally lock myself in rooms for, for days and it, it would be like a, my mom would be like, my mom would get worried for me. I mean, why is he not coming out of this room? I would be sitting and just listening to music, just, you know, because I felt that after learning music and listening to it, I felt that all this while I was wasting my time listening to music. Now I'm listening to it, you know. So all the songs that I loved, I heard them again and again, again. And that kind of taught me so much about that, about that particular song. Why I love this song so much was the question. I love it because, yeah, because I love it. But why I love it? Why do I love, why, 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 why this sound is touching me in this way? Why it's creating that effect? Why is why is it touching my emotions? And I mean that exploded, and there were so many artists, and then I started respecting so many artists so much more than I used to. Yeah. And I was like, "Wow, man, these guys were genius. These guys were legends in their own right." And <laughs> yeah, I mean that's how I think. I could not say one influence, but there was so much influence. You know, sometimes you just see one performance of somebody on stage. Yeah one performance of somebody sitting on a sitting in a sitting on a bus stop and just singing something and you are so inspired that one little moment yeah. you're like wow this guy is so good this guy is so so good yeah. and today we are yeah. living in an age where we can literally connect with the guy you know yeah, and you can right. you can you can probably fly in a mu another musician to your country and you guys can sit together in a room and record something it's like Wow, man, we are literally living, we are exploding as musicians, I think. We are exploding as a music industry and uh, I, we, we should be very happy we're on top of it, yeah? I, of think, course. I think, um, I apologize to interrupt, but, um, That's all right. one of the industries that um, re really struck a chord with us, apart from the, mus uh, the Indian music industry, was the Spanish from, from Spain in Europe, the Hispanic music industry. Um, 
I mean, I'm, I'm sure you're aware of it, you know, the acoustic guitars and the uh, flamenco and, and the ballads. ballads. Yeah. And wow. one, one, of the, one of the things that when we were listening to you, uh, especially, is, you know, when you do your covers or sometimes your original songs uh, in, in that, in, like in the mountains, you know, those videos, is that, is that where you grew up? <laughs> yes, yes, that okay. was home. So when, when we saw those videos, um, one of the first things that came to my mind was the Spanish music industry, mm. because uh, that's actually one of my dreams, that the, uh, an Indian music artist or an Indian music industry artist would collaborate with, with uh, a Spanish artist, because the cadence and sounds uh, would merge so well together. Um, so, well. so if, if that could be you, Jubin, may I be... <laughs> <laughs> I'll be buzzing, you know. I I can give you a list of artists that I they will be like, holy shit, you being the, you know, just listen to. I, I'll give you a recommendation. He's very famous. He actually, he's actually right now doing the Voice Spain. Uh, his name is Pablo, Pablo Lopez. Lopez. Fantastic. Um, just give it a listen, and then you you'll see what I mean. In in, in sense of it's crazy how inf even influencers, geographically speaking, have traveled from all over the world. Um, and probably India was probably at you know at the beginnings of times, pretty at the start of it when it comes to music. To be fair, mate. it was yeah. either India, you know, S South Asia or Africa that began it all. It was it was it was either that you know. So to see the influences travel across so many boundaries, it's uh, it's mental. Now it's incredible. It is, it is amazing. You you said what what is the name of the guy? Pablo. Pablo Lopez. Pablo Lopez. Okay. Yes. I'm gonna hear him. He's good. He's Nice. <laughs> Jubin, you have been an absolute pleasure and an incredibly inspiring podcast to have. Thank you so much for coming on, taking the time. I do know that you're a super, super busy man. Yeah, apologies if we took too much time, brother. <laughs> you're just awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure talking to you guys. Just one quick question. When did, how did you guys find me? Well, uh, okay. So I think it all started because... Uh, fans from from India, from your fans, uh, uh, reached out and they were like, "Listen, there's there's this guy. It's he February. sounds like this." Yeah, it was like early early the in early the year. 2022 around that. Yeah, and maybe late uh, uh, late last year, where people were really adamant and like, "You have to listen to this voice. Like the connection between emotion and music, it's incredible." So obviously, taking in people's recommendations. We were decided to review on the channel. Yeah, yeah. We were introduced to one of your live performances and changed my perspective completely of what live music can be. Um, so yeah, so do, thank do, you. Is, is Rachid uh, uh, screaming at you in the background because we're, we're running out of time? Sorry, is is Rachid uh, did he text us because we're running out of time? Because yes, yes. I'd love, because I'd love, because I'd love for you to to have a look yeah, at because I love. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> it's right, it's right. Yeah, it is. Yeah, <laughs> I do. Listen, thank you so much again. I'd, I'd love for you um, to to um, just just one last question. Perhaps uh, it, it will be a perfect time to to close the podcast. What has been your most memorable moment of mm. of your career, especially with those live performances that are so magical? Because those are the videos that touched us the most and made us want to, you know, have a chat with you. So there was a moment when I was on stage and I was singing a song. So. Now I'm used to a place where the moment the song gets over and the crowd blasts at you, they clap and stuff. You're used to that. The song ends and then everybody's, you know, it's like a, it's, it's like a ritual of every artist. So there was this one time I was singing a song on stage and I got lost in the performance of that, that moment. It was just mine, basically. It didn't really matter who else were there. And when the song ended, I was playing in an arena that were had somewhere around 15, 16,000, maybe 17,000 people. And when the performance ended, it was pin drop silence. That was the moment. Everybody was just like me. They were all with me in that moment. And then they realized and then they started clapping on it. So that, <laughs> that little 10 seconds of gap after that I finished the song and I was just coming back to the stage, I think people felt that with me. Wow. Insane. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Jubing. Jubing now the other. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for making the time. Thank you um, so much. Jubing is coming to London. Uh, we will put all the dates and you can get all your tickets in the links in the description below and all the comments. Um, it will be an app, you know, it's going to be an absolute honor. Hopefully, we get a chance to, you know, say, give you a little wave and say hello. Um, <laughs> thank you so much, everybody. Jubin. Thank you very much. Bye.
Bye-bye. Thank you so much, brother.